Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Monday, October 23, it's 5 a.m., and we are in some very, very, very big trouble. And when I say big trouble, I'm talking about both sides on this. I'm talking about being bearish and being bullish. So don't expect that you're going to go in today and just immediately start pushing buttons. We are in a very dangerous place right now. The 10 year has just hit 5%. The 2007 July highs. So, very, very clearly, caution of anything that goes on today. Like I said, there, we've got a couple of day window where we are in a danger zone here. So, be very, very, very cautious. No oversizing on any kind of positions on either either direction, regardless if you are going to be trading, even going one, two, three months out. Two year up at 5.125%, not as high as it has already been. All right. You've been up at 5.259 during the course of this year. So... This is a, a, a small asterisk on things are not as bad as they appear to be. Uh, what I was sharing with you there on Friday and having the data that we have on Mondays, looking for a green close today, meaning a close above Friday's close. That's not necessarily a bullish play, but it obviously at the same time, because of where we are, it's not an either one play, a bullish or a bearish, because we are right on the very edge right now. But anyway, for those of you looking at the Monday bullish puts spread for a green close on Monday, be aware. <clears throat> close today, minus 43.78, which we did, would be four in a row. Five times that has happened this year, a four in a row. We've never had five in a row this year. So... You've got very supportive data. The data is there to support this risk trade being on. I've gone back past 2023 into 2022. And at the end of December, in the middle of December, after the 4196 top, where we came over there on Jerome Powell, we had four in a row. One, two, three, four, right there in the latter part of December, just prior to Christmas. And we did go minus 20% from our all-time highs at that time. Prior to it, after we hit that 4,151 on the 1st of December, again, that big top, that big top from back in September 2022, one, two, three, four, five red closes in a row. You need to start going back to, we had it at the end of October into November, we had four in a row. Go back to where we were bottoming in October. Bottom there on October 13th. Going into it, you had one, two, three, four, five, six. You had it as well going into that bottom as we were selling off in September. We've not had five consecutive red closes in a row this year. As of right now, we're gapping down only 14, 15 points on the ES. But we are in a serious, serious danger zone. Where's the futures? Futures are here. We're on the cusp of the October lows right now. The NQ has a very, very tiny little gap that's left over from the rollover from back in June when they, when they rolled over the quarterlies. <clears throat> There is a tiny little gap over there on the NQ to be filled. Now, we've talked about how the Dow is a piece of shit because it's red on the year. The Dow is only 10% from its all-time highs. So it's not that it's horrible. It's more that it's not performing as opposed to your broken legs, broken arms, Russell 2000, which... Now we're really seriously starting to push low levels as we have now taken out the 2022, 2023 lows. So futures, 
everything right now is screaming absolute caution. Now, sticking with that one subject matter about getting a green close, like I shared, three minus 1% visits over here on the SPX, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Two, take advantage of that. We do not get five red closes in a row, and we will be closing above 4224.16. This would be the spread to be taking, and you're right now, this is a few minutes ago that this was taken. As of right now, you are getting right around $3 credit for this trade. It's a risk trade, but it's right there to be taken. So I'll bring you on here because what I'm trying to explain and detail here is the technically oversold waiting for somebody to smile and and give a fucking easter egg in your you know your trick-or-treat basket with a santa claus hat we've got a buy divergence here on the iwm one hour bring you over onto the four hour oversold still well off of those August lows, but without any shadow of a doubt, oversold and bearish at the moment, right to the 2020 open right now. Wider, wider view, like I shared with the daily, yes, bearish pushing down, massive, incredible buy divergence on the IWM. Come over onto the VIX. The VIX is obviously what we are extremely tracking. One hour insane sell divergence on the VIX one hour. Bring it out to the four hour. Haven't looked at this. Sell divergence? Yes. Bearish? Absolutely not. This is still with a wider time frame pushing itself up to the higher side, even though in a very wide view, there is a setup for a sell divergence. Bring you on to the daily the daily here, as you can see, the same thing. It does have a setup for a sell divergence, but it is not in any way, shape, or form bearish. Where we're at, once again, that big trend line. Bring that trend line out on the four hour. See that trend line right up there. Bring it on to the one hour. See that trend line right there. Bring it on to the one minute. Remove all these studies so they don't mess up the screen. We're gapped up. You can't get better than that. Gapped up above it to start pushing up into that 2263. Here's your QQQ. One hour oversold. Not extremely oversold, but oversold. Come on to your four hour. Oversold with a buy divergence on your four hour. Again, this is the QQQ. We'll look onto the index itself, the NASDAQ, like I shared. You have never been this oversold in 90 days. Go out to a wider time frame, 180 if it can fit on this screen. Again, you are the most oversold in six months over here on the NDX, on the four hour. Bring it on into the one hour. Again, one hour, only because of the way that we ended there on Monday, but this will change with the little gap up that we have. Oversold extremely there on Friday. Set up here with a buy divergence. Dow Jones, like I said, not that horrible. Looking at a one hour, yes, you are oversold. Look on your four hour, absolutely you are oversold. Absolutely. Come over onto your daily. Big, humongous setup for a buy divergence. So then we'll come over onto our SPX, which is our bread and butter. Here's our daily on our SPX. Again, set up for a huge buy divergence and an oversold warning on our daily come on to our four hour never been this oversold i'll go out as far as i can get on this that we can fit it on the screen in six months only in march were we this oversold on the four hour 
only in March. And on March, when this happened, this was on March 10th, right? Right there, March 13th, the low went in. March 10th was on Friday. March 13th was the Monday, placed in the low right there on Monday morning and off to the races we went all the way up there to 4607 from that 3809. So warnings are here for today, for now, for where we are at the present moment. Today is critical. Tomorrow is just as critical. And then tomorrow night, you're going to get Microsoft. You're going to get Google. Wednesday, you're going to get Meta and you're going to get Jerome Powell speaking. And Thursday, you're going to get the ECB rate hike decision. Can't tell you. Don't care. And then on Thursday afternoon, you're going to get Amazon. You are going to get four of your major big weights on the SPX and the QQQ. And the QQQ itself, this is the one thing that I can't, you know, leave out. Your 200-day moving average is down here at 337. The 400-day moving average is down at 318. Everyone else, everyone, IWM, 400, 200 are up at 182. SPX, you just saw your 200 get broken on Friday. Your 400 is way, way down at 4120. And then your Dow Jones. Lost the 50 right there on, lost the 200, and it's right on the 400-day moving average. So, again, extreme, extreme caution about involving in what is today. However, you have all of the data supporting you because there's a spread that could create, as of this moment, 150% return, a $2 risk for a $3 gain, and a full credit trade. Single leg calls and single leg puts are going to be extremely expensive with a plus 22 VIX. You've not traded a plus 22 VIX in forever. Most of you don't know, you know, oh, well, I can't say that because you're all married. I was going to say most of you don't know who you're sleeping with back in September, in March. Uh, both sides, both sides. Here we are. And we are looking at the SPX, okay, for today. We're live. A 4240 call is going to cost you $5.50 right now. If you were looking at a 4195 put for that major level, it's going to cost you $10 right now. Things are not cheap. This is going to be a very, very rough day for those of you who are playing single leg calls and puts for today's expiration. I'm not saying it's not a bad day to go shopping for a few days out, for, a, for even for a month out, but be careful. Be very, very careful with how you put yourself involved in today's market. I'll see you guys in the chat room.